Hi there, and welcome to the MAT 211 review on constrained optimization. My name is Julia, and I work for the tutoring centers at ASU. So today we have a word problem. Suppose a CD company estimates that at a price of P dollars, they will sell a total of Q equals nine or 90,000 minus 11,000 times P CDs. What price will maximize our revenue? We're gonna use the Lagrange multiplier method to compute our answer. So, the first thing we need to do here is we need to figure out what our function is that we're trying to maximize. We're trying to maximize revenue. So let's call that R. And let me switch colors here. Make this easier to look at. Do blue instead. There we go. All right, so we're gonna look at R. We'll call that our revenue function. And this is gonna be terms of P and Q. And revenue, recall, is just price times quantity. So P times Q. So next we want to look at our Lagrange multipliers. So first we wanna figure out what our Lagrange function is. And remember that is gonna be L of, in this case, P and Q equals our function, which is in this case is R of P, Q minus lambda times G of P and Q. Now remember, G is our constraining equation rewritten so that it is equal to zero. Our constraining equation in this case is this function here. Our, our Q equals 90,000 minus 11,000 P. So this guy. So we wanna rewrite this so that it is equal to zero. And all that means is that we're gonna take, so we have Q here equals nine, 50,000 minus 11,000, that's a comma, P, and we're just going to subtract Q from both sides. So that gives us zero equals 90,000 minus 11,000 P minus Q. And that all equals zero. So we know that this is our G that's a G of P and Q. So let's substitute our functions into our Lagrange function here. So we'll have for our R, that's just P times Q, P, Q. And then we have minus lambda times 90,000 minus 11,000 P minus Q. We'll want to go ahead and distribute our lambda across. So we have P times Q minus 90,000 lambda minus 11,000 lambda times P minus, actually this will be a plus, and this will be a plus too. That's something we don't wanna make, make the mistake of doing because we have a negative here and a negative here. So these will be both plus, and then the last term will be plus lambda Q. Great. So now we want to find our partial derivatives of L with respect to P and Q. So let's erase a little bit here and make ourselves some space. So if we have L with respect to P, that is going to be Q. This will go to zero plus 11, thousand lambda 
And then this will go to zero as well. So that's all we have. And then our derivative, our partial derivative of L with respect to Q is going to be P. This will again go to zero, this 90,000 lambda. This will go to zero, the 11,000 lambda P. And then we have plus lambda for our derivative of lambda Q. And lastly, we have our G of P and Q, which is equal to 90,000 minus 11,000 P minus Q, and that's equal to zero. And we want to set these two to be equal to zero, these two partial derivatives to be equal to zero too, in order to solve for our point. So we have this system here. Let me go ahead and do a little erasing. So first things first, let's look at our second equation. We know that P plus lambda equals zero, and therefore lambda is going to equal negative P. We can go ahead and substitute this into our first equation for our lambda. So we have Q plus 11,000 times lambda, which is times negative p. So if we want to rewrite this really quickly, just to make it a little neater, we know that this will now be minus p. And that is equal to 0. Therefore, Q is going to equal 11,000 times P. Now we can use this relationship here and we can substitute this into our third equation, our G equation, to start solving for our variables. So we have, that's a 9, 90,000 minus 11,000 times or 11,000 P, and we'll go ahead and substitute this one in for our Q. So this is minus another 11,000 P, and that equals zero. So therefore, we have 90,000 minus 22,000 P equals zero. We can subtract this over to the other side, so we have 90,000 equals 22,000 P. And if we solve for P here by dividing 90,000 by 22,000 and simplifying, we get 90 over 22 equals P. So now we can use this equation. We can actually just use this equation this time to solve for our corresponding Q. We could also do it by substituting that back into here, but this relationship is already nice and explicit. So let's go ahead and use this one. So we know that Q is equal to 11 or 11,000 times P, but P is 90 over 22. And if we go ahead and multiply this out, we end up with 45,000. So that is our Q value. So let's erase a little bit here. We already know that the price that will maximize revenue is 
this P value here. So our price that will maximize revenue is equal to whatever 90 over 22 is in dollars. So that's our actual answer. But really quick, let's look at the revenue associated with that since we're here. Our corresponding revenue, remember our revenue function is P of Q is going to be equal to P times Q. So that's going to be equal to 90 over 22 times 45,000. And this is approximately equal to 18,000, or excuse me, 184,000 and ninety dollars and ninety one cents. That's the end of our problem. And by the way, we did go ahead and round this to the nearest cent. So thanks so much. Let me clear my screen here. Before I go, I just want to remind you all that if you are looking for any additional academic support or tutoring services, you can go to our Tutoring Center website at tutoring.asu.edu. You'll find all of our services there. If you're looking for tutoring service for a specific course, you can use our tutor search, tutor search tool, which you can find at our main page or by going to this full link. So thanks so much and have a great rest of your day.